I think there's some misunderstandings about flashover. It's not so much the flashover event, it's the gases associated with the flashover. We have um, very rich, thick, uh, cooler gas down at the floor level where we're at, where we're working in. And then as we progress up to the ceiling level, we have a much hotter, leaner gas. At the ceiling level, we could actually have uh, gases that are, that are above their ignition temperature, but too lean to burn. And as we go down 18 inches, we get a little bit richer, cooler gas, a little bit richer, cooler gas, and, and so on and so on as we get to the lower elevation. Right now, if we recognize that we have high velocity smoke, high heat smoke, um, right when we begin our entrance, we have to start cooling those gases. Um, years ago, um, the school of thought was, hey, get in, put the wet stuff on the red stuff. You'd get pushed and pushed and pushed in, and that's how we're losing people. We have to stop that mindset, back up, and start using a straight stream and cool that hot smoke. It's not the fire that's gonna get us, it's that smoke. That smoke is like throwing a gallon of gas in the air and suspending it. That's how flammable that gas is. As often as I've done it, we've actually been able to even accidentally create a flashover on ourselves just because of the wrong nozzle pattern. If we go in with the fog pattern and we start swirling it around and, and we mix up these different layers, I guarantee you we're gonna create a flash on ourselves if we're in a superheated condition. Now, if we go in with the solid stream of water and we cut through all those different layers of smoke, we're gonna be able to project that water up to that upper atmosphere and we're gonna be able to cool that environment. We're gonna be able to quench that environment and we're gonna be able to get in and find that seat of the fire or effect a rescue or get ourselves out to safety. The expansion ratio of steam is 1700 to one and that's at 212 degrees. When I began this training and looking through research, I found that the expansion ratio of water when you put into that atmosphere at 1128 degrees turns into 4200 to one. So now one gallon of water translates into 4200 gallons of steam. Now if I'm going to put water into that atmosphere and I'm in a nice tight confined space, what's that gonna do to the environment if I put a lot of water in there? Again, it's gonna drive those heated gases down into my environment and possibly bring flashover down upon myself. It's misunderstanding how to use your nozzle as a tool to cool those gases down on the way to the seat of the fire. So it's not really putting water on the seat of the fire, but it's actually squirting water into that smoke layer above your head. Mm -hmm.